Hey everybody, this is Darren Van Dam, and you are watching Flick Connection, the show that helps you get more out of movies, and today we're going to rank every single Guy Ritchie movie, as well as his newest release, Wrath of Man. So Wrath of Man just hit theaters today, and I'm going to be ranking it along with all of Guy Ritchie's movies. I'm going to be spending a minute or less per movie explaining why it got the ranking it did, what I like about it, but I'm going to spend a little more time talking about Wrath of Man since this is the new release, but I'm not going to give you any spoilers. I'm also going to be telling you up here next to the title where it's available to stream. We're also going to skip two of Guy Ritchie's 12 movies. It's Aladdin and Swept Away. Aladdin's not really a Guy Ritchie movie. It's a Disney movie that they paid him to show up and keep the wheels moving along. And then Swept Away is one he did with Madonna while they were married. And honestly, if you're married to Madonna in the late 90s, early 2000s, you kind of have to do a movie if she wants to. Nowadays, if they were still married, it would probably be the other way around. That said, let's start all the way at the back with my number 10 pick, which I did struggle with, my number nine and 10. I didn't know how to put them. I ultimately landed on putting The Man From U.N.C.L.E. at the back of the list. Now I do think this is a fun movie. I like a lot of elements about it. It's got some great sequences in it, and it's just a good, fun watch. There's a lot of great qualities to it, and especially considering it's based on an old TV show that I am not familiar with at all, I liked a lot of things about it. It's a lot better than a lot of other things that typically come out, but it's my least favorite Guy Ritchie movie. But then we'll jump to my number nine pick, and the reason it got nine and not ten is I consider King Arthur, Legend of the Sword, to be highly underrated. This got panned critically. People just, in general, didn't really like it. I thought it was a really cool effort, and it doesn't really feel like a Guy Ritchie movie. I mean, there's a little bit of his flavor in there, but it's got these big, over-the-top visual effects, which usually kind of put me to sleep, but I liked the mystical element of this. I even wish it had gone harder in that direction. That said, I thought it was a cool effort. I've enjoyed watching it more than once, but still, it's pretty far from my favorite. Next, I'll rank Sherlock Holmes and Sherlock Holmes A Game of Shadows in that order. I find the sequel to be really fantastic. I like everything about it. It carries a lot of what I loved about the original over. It's a good follow-up. I just found it to not be nearly as rewatchable as the original Sherlock Holmes, which for a movie that's a big budget, crowd pleaser type of a movie with an American actor playing the iconic Sherlock Holmes, this movie is incredibly rewatchable because ultimately Robert Downey Jr. was a really good choice for this role, I think. I like the production design, I love the flavor of this one, it's got some fun sequences, and that's kind of a theme with Guy Ritchie is he doesn't forget to have fun with his movies. They're not over the top and zany and crazy, but just good, fun, solid entertainment, and Sherlock Holmes definitely fits that bill. They're the enemy, not me. They're new! I'm old. I stay, they go. I say, you do. Not wick without me. Wick. It's us against them, Jake. Now we jump to easily the most cerebral, thinky type movie he ever did. It's called Revolver. Now this is also the least accessible and probably the least liked by most people, but here I've got it right in the middle of the pack because I really dug this movie back when it came out. Not only is it this really thinky game of chess where everything's metaphorical and it's not really quite taking place inside our reality, Ray Liotta has easily his best performance since Goodfellas in it, and then Jason Statham probably gives his best performance too. He often plays the same character because that's what people like. It's kind of a product now. But in Revolver, he does something different and you can see his acting chops on display more so than most other movies that he's in. Now, I do not recommend this for mass audiences because it is very strange and it's very hard to wrap your head around, but if you like that description of it, you should definitely seek out Revolver. Is this a robbery? Yes, it is a robbery. <laughs> Where's reverse? You have to lift up the knob on the gear stick. Oh, yeah. He then followed up Revolver with Rock and Roll just about a year or two later, and Rock and Roll is probably his most accessible movie. 
it's fun, it's entertaining, it's more comical than a lot of his other movies, and then it's just got a packed cast like a lot of his best movies do. Great role from Gerard Butler, but then you've also got Idris Elba, Tom Hardy, Tom Wilkinson, Thady Newton, and then there's dark elements, but also some really funny elements to it as well. Just a good, sort of simpler movie. And this one also, I think, serves as a really good bridge between his older, grittier work and his newer, sort of more refined movies. You ready? Ready. And then that brings us to his newest flick. I've got Wrath of Man coming in at number four. I really enjoyed this movie, so much so, I wondered if it really deserved this number four spot, but the more I thought about it, the more it just seems like something I'm gonna really enjoy watching years from now. This feels a little bit like an old Charles Bronson movie, which is totally appropriate because Jason Statham is probably the closest thing we have to Charles Bronson today, so I really loved that aspect of it. And Jason Statham is at his most badass in this movie. He really is. He's got some hard edges to him. I mean, for somebody that's always a badass, for them to escalate it in a movie like this, I really enjoyed seeing that. And then it is a Guy Ritchie gangster movie mixed in with this sort of basic heist movie. The type of story that this is, is the same type of story that would go like straight to video, except here it's just expertly told and really well executed. If you'd like to know more of my thoughts on Wrath of Man, there is a longer extended review for channel members. If you wanna become a channel member, just click that join button below the video and you'll get all the details on what that involves and you'll instantly get access to every single member video I've already created. But that said, it does feel more like a basic action movie than a Guy Ritchie movie, but it is packed with Guy Ritchie flavor and he's more subtle here than he typically is and I like that a lot. Not that I don't like his wild, crazy stuff. I've got some of those ranking very high on this list, but it's cool to see him do this more subdued thing with little flares and flourishes of the camera from time to time. I found this one and The Gentleman to both be sort of done in that vein, and I really dig it. Speaking of The Gentleman, Guy Ritchie straddled the pandemic. The Gentleman came out just weeks before the world shut down, and then here we are about 15 months later, and Wrath of Man hits the theaters, and I think these two work together well, but Wrath of Man is mean and heavy and brooding, whereas The Gentleman is kind of this slick gangster movie, and I love it for that, which is why it's my number three pick. I think Matthew McConaughey kills it as this gangster in this movie. This one's clever, but not too clever. Colin Farrell's character is fantastic. He's not doing anything too crazy and distracting and flashy. Again, I like that stuff, but I also like seeing him do something different, and I found The Gentleman to be this great accompaniment to my top two picks, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, and Snatch. Guy Ritchie's first two movies are still his best. And there was a time when I would have said Lock, Stock was my favorite. I used to have the poster up on my wall in college. I love the movie, I love everything about it. It's his grittier, darker one. There's quite a bit of comedy to it as well, but it's got this hard rough and tumble quality to it that is so cool, but then all the characters are really well fleshed out. You've got Jason Statham in one of his first roles, so long before he was a big star, Vinnie Jones in one of his first roles. Coming off being a really famous football player, he then starts getting into acting, launches a huge career with this movie, and the story is just fun. I mean, this is, if you wanna get into Guy Ritchie, this is a great place to start. You might have to use subtitles, not only because of their thick English accents, but they use quite a lot of slang. Once you get the hang of it, it's a really fun movie to watch, but it is my number two pick, which makes Snatch my number one pick. I think it's easily Guy Ritchie's best movie to this day. And it's chaotic, it's all over the place. There's constantly plates spinning story-wise, but the characters are so rich and so well acted that they actually keep you grounded in this story and you always know where you are and who's doing what because you're following these characters so well. And again, you've got Vinnie Jones, Jason Statham, Brad Pitt is amazingly unintelligible in this movie. But you've also got Benicio Del Toro, Dennis Farina, rest in peace, Lenny James before The Walking Dead, and Alan Ford as Bricktop, one of my favorite gangster performances of all time. His monologue about the pigs is 
about as good as it gets in a gangster movie, in my opinion. I mean, a great soundtrack, great setup and payoff. It's just one of my favorites and it probably always will be. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite Guy Ritchie movie is. Also help me thank the Patreon supporters. They have been a great support system for the channel. If you're interested in becoming one, there's a link in the description. There's also a link where you can become a channel member and get access to that Wrath of Man extended review as well as every other video I've created for channel members. Likes, comments, and shares go a very long way, so they're always appreciated. But I will keep making videos like this as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for watching this Guy Ritchie episode, and you will see me on the next one.